I sat in front of the mirror and watched my once perfect locks covering the floor like a carpet. I was afraid to hear what my mother would say when she saw me like this. But all of this was for the sake of a dream, and I sincerely believed that this new image would help me. Hi, my name is Samantha, and I'm 16. All of my friends say that I was a born comedian. My jokes immediately crack them up. Being the life and soul of the company, of course, is pretty cool. But I always wanted more. I wanted to perform on stage, to sell out concerts and become a real celebrity. And then, one day, that chance fell before me. That day, as usual, I was loading my textbooks into my bag and going home. Then, a teacher came in and announced an unexpected news. Our school was participating in a large-scale comedy project. Any student could make their own jokes. And if the audience and jury members liked them, the participant would be able to pass on to the next stage. Yes, I thought, here it was, my opportunity. I instantly imagined myself standing on the stage with a microphone, the audience enthusiastically applauding, and journalists lining up for an interview with me. Glory, fans, tours. Oh, it was everything I dreamed about. Absolutely euphoric. I ran home and took a notebook out of my school bag. I had so many ideas in my head that the pen could hardly keep up with my thoughts. And as a result, I was surprised at myself. The outlines were ideal drafts for stand-up. When I performed with them on stage, both the jury and the audience would absolutely be delighted. And in the morning, I happily ran to the casting. Suddenly, I was stopped at the entrance. It turned out that only guys could participate in the competition. All of my dreams collapsed in an instant. I wasn't about to give up, but I didn't know what to do either. So I decided I'd put my head together with my best friend, Jess. <laughs> What's the big deal? You'll just change into a boy and perform, Jess said confidently. That was a shock for me. After all, how could someone in their right mind confuse a girl for a guy? The judges weren't blind. And unfortunately, my suspicions were confirmed. When I went to the casting anyway, my long hair accidentally fell out from under my cap and the jury members kicked me off the set. You can't imagine how upset I was. I was on the edge of giving up my ideas when suddenly I came up with a crazy plan. What if I really changed into a guy? You know, shaved off all my hair and adopted some boyish manners. Jess was shocked that I was even thinking of doing that, but when she realized that I was not gonna be persuaded against it, she agreed to help me. We spent the entire night practicing my boyish behavior at my house. And in the morning, with trembling hands, I brought an electric razor to my head. Right then, my goal seemed a little more important to me than my hair. And suddenly, the locks on my head one by one fell to the floor. When I came out of my room with a bald head in the morning, my mother screamed. And when my dad appeared, everything just got worse. Both of my parents began to scold me as if my hair was the only thing they cared about. Yeah. This was not really how I imagined my transformation going. Fortunately, though, after a few hours of arguments, my parents and I came to an agreement that suited everyone. Until my hair grew back, I would go to school in a wig, and to the casting in a boy's outfit. And in the morning, I even improved it. To look like a guy, I drew thick eyebrows and stubble. And with the help of a cream corrector, I made myself sharp cheekbones and chin. Along with my bald head, I looked pretty convincing. I once again rehearsed everything that I'd been learning with Jess, and I confidently went to the casting. And this time, it worked. I introduced myself as Sam, and I was allowed to enter the stage. I went out and I started telling prepared jokes. It seems to me that girls have completely forgotten how to cook. After all, there are now instructions everywhere. I feel like they're gonna start writing open before use on pizza boxes. And on bananas, eat without the peel. And I said all this in the deepest voice I could. The whole performance went down without a hitch. Someone even shouted from the audience, dude, well done. And I was really proud of myself, but I was kind of offended. After all, Samantha wrote all the jokes and some Sam was getting the recognition. But I was the one who got myself into this, so it was pointless to complain. Moreover, the jury let me pass on to the next stage, where I had to face strong competition. But I didn't know how to surprise the audience now. After all, to make a cool stand-up, you need to tell the truth about your life. And everything I knew about the life of guys, I had already used in the first performance. At home, I tried in vain to come up with jokes. Only topics congenial to girls came to mind. And from the mouth of a guy, it would be completely unfunny. In search of hints, I got carried away by videos of popular stand-up artists on YouTube. And I found nothing better than just copying them and putting them together in one text. And at first, this trick really worked. Imagine, I even managed to become a favorite of the judges. 
but suddenly, one of my speeches was interrupted by a loud voice from the audience. Deceiver! That's not your joke! Have you ever gone bright red with shame? Well, that's exactly what happened for me. I didn't know what to do, so I just ran off the stage to the sounds of a disgruntled crowd. Fortunately, the jury mistook my cowardice for ordinary emotion and allowed me to pass on to the next stage. Now I couldn't chicken out, but to pass off someone else's jokes as my own, I couldn't do that anymore. I was trying so hard to come up with a speech that a guy would write, but only girly things came to mind about envious friends and new tights. Nothing was going well, and in this turmoil, I didn't notice how terrible my life became. I didn't even care what I looked like anymore. I didn't take the wig my parents bought for me to school. I stopped wearing makeup or dresses, and I began to look more and more like a guy. My grades at school started to crumble, and fights with my parents became more and more frequent. My classmates no longer laughed at any of my jokes, and my friends even stopped talking to me. Even Jess. A good many times, she had told me, you've gone too far, please stop now. But I couldn't. I was already too close to my dream. These changes though, they never got me any closer to my goal. I was never really able to understand guys to joke about topics close to them. And in the semifinal of the competition, I went on stage completely empty. The jokes were so bad that half of the audience left the hall before the end of my performance. And the judges unanimously decided there was no place for someone so unfunny in the finals. My failure at the competition was really difficult for me to handle. I spent days sobbing into my pillow and there was no one there to support me. Even at school, I sat alone. Neither guys nor girls would approach me because I couldn't share interests with any of them. But suddenly, on one of these horribly sad days, the teacher again made an announcement. The school would be hosting a qualifying stage for the female comedian competition. I jumped up, overjoyed. After all, this was my chance to put things right. I immediately dug out my old notebook with girly jokes and I began to prepare for the performance. During the rehearsals, I brought the act to the ideal, so I came to the casting in full confidence of my abilities. But suddenly, one of the administrators blocked my path again. It turns out that they'd mistaken me for a guy, and they weren't gonna allow me to participate in the contest. You can't even imagine how angry I was. After all, I was a girl! A girl! Could they not see that? It was all I could do to prove that I was a girl by presenting them documents. But while I was going home to go back and get those documents, the casting ended. I was a gone goose, missing my second chance. I was so angry that I threw the notebook with the jokes in the trash bin. I have no need for this thing anymore. At home, I had a complete meltdown, and at first I didn't even know who to blame for my failures. But when I looked at my reflection in the mirror through my tears, I recoiled in horror. I couldn't believe that I really look like this. A bald head, furrowed eyebrows, completely dirty clothes. No wonder they didn't believe I was a girl at the casting. And then I remembered how I looked just a couple of weeks ago. I was always well quaffed, friendly, I smiled sweetly, and I made other people happy with unobtrusive jokes. I was loved for who I was, but because I pursued popularity, I changed myself beyond recognition. What a pity it is that I realized this way too late. And even though I knew that nothing could be done, I was determined to at least take one last peek at what I deprived myself of. So the next morning, I cleaned myself up, put on a wig and a dress, and I went to the contest as a spectator. I was hoping to listen to other people's jokes and learn from competitors, but I definitely didn't expect what was gonna happen next. My best friend Jess came onto the stage, and in her hands, she had the same notebook that I had thrown in the trash yesterday out of anger. The audience froze in anticipation, and then Jess started speaking. Female compliments are invigorating. One day, a neighbor at the desk next to me said, you look great. You obviously tried hard today. It felt like she was humiliating me, but she was being nice about it. She went to zero, but I wasn't gonna give in to that. Yeah, and you're great too. It's a mystery why guys don't pay attention to you. And Jess, from up on the stage, told all of the jokes that I'd came up with, and the audience was laughing and applauding loudly. I imagined that I was standing there instead of Jess, and all of the ovations were addressed to me, not to this pretender. I'd probably never been so angry before. After all, th this was theft. How could she do this to me? I thought that we'd been best friends, and I decided I'd give up on my desperate act. I was already getting up from my seat to go on stage and tell everyone the truth about whose jokes those were when I suddenly heard Jess's voice again. These jokes were written by my best friend, Samantha, but in her pursuit of a dream, she lost herself. She got confused 
And she turned herself from a talented girl into a talentless boy, Jess said. And then everything felt like it was in a fog. Jess asked the jury to allow me to participate in the contest right from up on stage. Since the audience had loved my jokes so much, I couldn't believe what was happening. Was I really going to have another chance? But the miracle didn't last long. The judges admitted that this was decent material, but the rules were rules. All participants had already been registered, and new ones couldn't be accepted. But I wasn't upset at all by being refused. I ran happily up to Jess and I hugged her. After all, even after this stupid transformation into a boy, I wasn't alone. Someone still loved me, and they were trying to help me become myself again. If it wasn't for Jess, I probably would have gotten even more upset after this contest. And now, I have my motivation back. I wanted to become that Samantha again, whose sincere jokes drove people crazy with laughter. I firmly decided to grow my hair back and unlearn those boyish manners in order to participate in the show next year. What kind of crazy changes have you gone through in order to achieve your dreams? Go ahead and tell me in the comments.